That was really nice. I took, I heard it, I took half of that, which I didn't deserve. But thanks for coming to Lost Recording Studio, the second floor venue. I mean, this place is pretty cool. They built it just for, for everyone around here. What do you guys think so far? It's pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. this is a good venue, right? Very much. You know what I did for you guys? Because it's our first show in Jamestown in 15 months. You know what I did for you guys? I got some of the best comedians you're going to see for the rest of the year. I'll just go out and say that. I got you my favorite comedians. I got you our favorite comedians for you tonight. Thank you. <laughs> I love the thank you. You're welcome. Now I... I'm going to tell my first joke in Jamestown in 15 months. You guys ready? Yeah. Let's hear it. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Who has two thumbs and is afraid of thumbs? <laughs> I can never make it through that joke. <laughs> Get over Bloom, everybody, just entertaining us. He's gonna be spinning some beats throughout the entire night. God damn, just hot beats. Who's here vaccinated? You guys vaccinated? Woo! Yeah, that's what I love to see. I got vaccinated, I went to the doctor for the first time, like, last time I was at the doctor, like, we were still really upset about 9-11. <laughs> and it was a long time, and I went to the doctor, and I was like, hey, you got any of them vaccines in the back? And they said, yes. And they got me a vaccine, and I said, do you, uh, is there any worries or concerns? Am I going to get sick? And the nurse says, just drink plenty of fluids. And I said, thank God, those are practically all I drink. <laughs> <laughs> that was my second joke in Jamestown. As good as the first one, I don't know. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> I'm up here for approval. So I learned a ton of things over quarantine. Like before I came up here, I had so many Tiger King jokes and I'm like, yeah, these will be relevant. And then <laughs> it, shit just never stopped. And now we're here and I can't use any of them, which is terrible. But I learned a bunch of skills. I learned how to paint a little bit. I kind of got into music. I started learning how to lock pick. Um, I went to the uh, doctor for the, for the first time in forever. And I was feeling so good about it. I was really excited. And like I said, like I haven't been in forever. And I'm like, obviously I'm in incredible health and they'll give me a lots, just lots of good news. Like I even called and they're like, oh, you want to see a doctor? Uh, is, a, is 11 okay? And I was like, nah, just one doctor is just fine. <laughs> that, and so I was feeling good and they came in and, and they, they took my blood and they weighed me and he came in and he gives me the blood work and I don't know how to read any of it. There's just like charts and bars and, and stuff all over it. And he looks at me and, and I'm joking with him because I think like if I make really smart people laugh, I'm really smart. So I was just on and I was killing it. And he's like, do you have any questions? And I was like, how many bones do you know? And he's like, all of them. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm glad I'm here. And he goes, do you have any questions? And I was like, well, I, I don't know, like don't sugarcoat it. And he goes, well, it's funny that you say that because you have diabetes. <laughs> and that's real and it, 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 <laughs> I, I got diabetes and I did nothing to prevent it but I was still surprised <laughs> like I was just I, I have a bucket of suckers you ever been to my house I have a bucket of blow pops and that's like my lunch and dinner most of the times and I'm like what diabetes how could this happen I can't believe it uh, so, not only, like, if I've been dealing with diabetes for a couple months, I'm almost three years sober, and I feel really old. I found out I'm allergic to cats, which means I can't eat any more cats <laughs> for as long as I live. And I'm such a blast to be around, diabetes and sobriety. Like, you want to go have a beer and have wings? And I'm like, no, I can't. My tum-tum. I ate candy for breakfast. Now I might die. <laughs> that was an impression of me. And I did really good. <laughs> really good at it. Oh, 
I just feel old. I just had a birthday Wednesday, and I'm assuming that's why you guys are here. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Man, I'm, I won't tell you how old I am, but I'll tell you this. If I was on your favorite sports team, you guys would be upset. <laughs> I'd be like, why is this guy still on the fucking team? He is too old. <laughs> Stupid. I have a flashlight at my house. I don't know why, but I have one. So that's like kind of at the age I'm at. I turn on the radio to like see better sometimes if I get lost. I just want to be old enough where it's adorable. Like, like I'm in my 40s now. I was expecting, no, possible. You couldn't possibly be in your 40s. I'm in my, I just want to be old enough where it's adorable that I try things. You know, you see that like a little old man shovel in the sidewalk and you get yelled at for trying short. You're like, get back in the house. You're too old to be shoveling. That's what I want. I just want to like to try things and I get respect for trying and then they just shuffle me back in the house and someone else does it for me. I found out over quarantine, I'm, I have this irrational fear of the garbage man. Like I really freak out. There's no joke to this. I was just going to say... Like, every time I see him outside, I have this irrational fear they're just gonna knock at my door and, like, show me my can and be like... <laughs> and, like, not take it, and then I'm just... I don't know why. I was leaving for work just this week, and I saw him outside, and I just turned around. And I'm like, I can't let them see my garbage. <laughs> like, that's private. And they see all that, and I don't want them, like... They chose their profession, right? And it's fine, and... You know, they can live with their choices, and they're throwing the garbage. I don't want them to connect my face to that garbage. It's really... It's really stupid. I got a message on Facebook the other day. Uh, my old class president was like, do you want to do comedy at our 25th high school union? And I said, no, thank you. Because those are crazy. You guys ever been to a reunion? Like, the five years, is like, you get as drunk as you possibly can. And you're just out there to, like, drunk, drink, fuck, and fight. You're, like, you're settling scores. You're looking for, <laughs> for the one person you never kissed. Like, it is chaos. And then the tenure, everyone has kids. They're like, look at my kid. Look at my kid. Oh, I got a kid. Look at, oh, I shouldn't be out this late. My kid. Oh, my kid, look at my kid. Do you want to see my kid? Here's pictures of my kid. That's 10 years. 15 years is the other way around. It's divorce. And then you're drinking, fucking, and fighting for that because you didn't get that chance at your fives. You're too busy having kids. What's up, guys? Perfect timing. Nice to see you. And because I love all of you, I'm going to give you a pass. Thank you. Don't pass <laughs> I'm wrapping up. Just wait till you sit down. How are you? Great. Good. Good to hear. We're waiting for you a little bit. If anyone's upset we started the show late, it's these guys right here. <laughs> uh, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, man. It's festival season. You know, the summer comes out and the festivals come out like Lala and Red Rocks and all those other like Bonnaroo and stuff. And that's like how I still judge how I'm cool. I'll look at the poster and whatever the smallest band I know is how cool I am. It's like a hipster eye test. And I'm looking, I'm like, okay, Lincoln Park I get because they're really big and like Metallica, Korn, and then it gets smaller. And I'm like, oh shit, I don't know these guys at all. <laughs> I don't even know why I bother. I'm not gonna go to a show. Like, I look like this, I'm coming, they're gonna think I'm a cop. Or like, my, my kid's lost somewhere, and they're gonna be like, yeah, just come and get your kid and get out, please. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. How do I convince them? I can't come up and be like, hey guys, I really want drugs. They're really cool. I'm cool with drugs, please. <laughs> That's good anyways, I'm getting older. I, my dance moves are middle-aged white woman getting out of the way of a picture. Which like... <laughs> That's my one move.
Man, when they say you book a show, if you're going to be on it, you have to be the worst talent on that show. And that's why I booked Kip. Because he peed himself and turned it into a song. And I peed myself, and I had to go to HR and apologize and say I wouldn't do it again. When I knew I might do it again. <laughs> If you're wondering, Paul, why do you look the way that you do? I am a father to three teenagers, and I'm tired all the time. I get yelled at all the time. I take my son every week, and I take my son to Buffalo for hockey. And I don't know if you've ever been in, in a car with a teenager. Um, they don't talk to you under any circumstance. Um, they put their earbuds in, and they're, they're tuned out, and you drive the whole way in complete silence. In fact, they will listen to the exact same song that's on the radio in their earbuds just so they don't have to talk to you. <laughs> and so, like, what am I doing that time anyways? I just like, hey, uh, excited for the game? Like, that's all I can say to them. Like, that's it. The only thing that keeps my brain, like, I'm there early in the morning, I'll be there tomorrow morning. The only thing that keeps me sane is when I'm driving and I see the two lawyers on the billboards I have to imagine that they're best friends. It just makes me feel so good that they're just two guys who started a business just a couple of best friends, getting people out of DUIs. I don't know, there's no joke. I just, I'm just, I'm just sharing some stuff with you. How's everyone doing? You guys doing good? Enjoying the show so far? I'm going to talk about skeletons. Oh, he says, I'm going to talk about penises. You're like, yay! I'm going to talk about skeletons. You're like, mm, no. So over the pandemic, I got fired uh, pretty early in April, which is fucking awesome. I don't know if you guys have been fired through the pandemic, but it is great. And too bad you can't do it anymore. And, I'm, and, I, and I, I'm talking to my wife, I'm all stressed out, and I'm like, what if there was a war? And like someone's arm fell off in the middle of the battlefield, and days and weeks go by, and that arm decomposes, and the bone goes to where the bones go, where the skeleton world is. And then that's what the skeletons use to play instruments, because they use other bones of other people. Now, what happens if they're playing instruments and then that person dies? Do their instruments get reunited with the person that dies or are they just out the bones forever and you get to live your attorney without a leg or an arm? And she looked me dead in the eye and she said, Sweetie, you need to get a fucking job. Please, please get a job. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> Our next comedian is one of my favorites. See, there's no joke. I'm just sharing things with you. We don't have an open mic to do these anymore. I'm just really excited to talk in front of people. If I want to talk about skeletons, I'm going to do it. This is my time. <laughs> in case you're wondering, I'm not just bringing up the same guy over and over again. Just a lot of people look like Evan. <laughs> Horses were so good at messing around, they banned it from pools forever. That's like the number one rule at every pool is like no horse play. That's how good they were. They were just so good at it. And they're like, we just can't allow this where people can be in trouble. And then my wife looked me in the eye and said, Do you, did you like update your resume? I was like, what are you doing? You're not even trying out there. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> you, know what I, you know what I'm talking about, right? Kazoo. Do you still own a kazoo? Right? Do you actively have a kazoo and that's why you're not saying anything? It's okay. We've all been through it. Our next comedian is currently in his kazoo phase. Please welcome to the stage, Antelone Jackson! 
Hey, yo, what the fuck is a kazoo? Yeah. <laughs> if it's consensual, I am ready for a hug. I am vaccinated. I give a scientifically perfect hug if you guys are ready for that. Before I bring up the next comic, I got one question for you to think of the ride home. Mary, fuck, kill. Alvin, Simon, and Theodore. <laughs> you don't have to answer me now. Just kind of think about it a little bit. And let me know after the show, okay? I'm trying to see something. <laughs> what could that mean? I have no idea. <laughs> wow! What a show. Before we go, can I get a picture of everyone? Me and my mom, I said some crazy shit to her, and I made some promises I can't, I can't keep. So I'm just gonna take a picture of all you guys just to prove to her where you are. I'm gonna send it to her and nah, there we go. But drive home safe and let's hug the fuck out of each other!